Good evening, y'all. Dr. Ben here. Welcome to another vlog. And it is Sunday evening, uh, 641 exactly. And tomorrow is the start of another work week. If you watched my previous vlog, I just uh, went on vacation uh, to my hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. I explored Savannah, Georgia. It was absolutely healing. Oh my God, I really enjoyed my time in both places. But um, I'm sad to announce that my apartment, even after living here in Durham for about two months, is still not completely put together. I mean, it's been taking me such a long time. In the beginning, when I first moved down here, I was going through a little bit of a depression spell. So I was working really, really slow. And then I had to buy furniture that I couldn't afford. So I waited until I got my first paycheck to buy furniture. But today we're gonna get some things done. So my goal today, tonight before starting the new work week is to assemble a little baker's rack here move the trash can over there the baker's rack box is right over here hi John luke say hi baby say hi <laughs> but the baker's rack is right here i want to assemble that before starting my new work week because it's been sitting it, it got delivered on, on thursday so it's been four days since i've yet to deliver it but let me tell you why i need to deliver it my kitchen is uh here is a lot smaller than the kitchen that I had back in Atlanta. If y'all have watched my Atlanta vlogs while I lived there. Uh, so I've been having to put like my appliances, like my air fryer and my microwave in th these really awkward spots in the kitchen, which I don't really want it to be there. I want to be able to put a drying rack here. So I bought that baker's rag to assemble it. Also, if you've watched my moving vlogs, you y'all know that I took about three trips back and forth in my Subaru Outback from Atlanta to make sure I got all most of my things that I wanted to keep back here. But I ended up having to leave uh, two pieces of per furniture from my bedroom uh, at in at my parents' house in Atlanta. So I was able to grab that this time around. So my bedroom is finally complete. So that's a good thing. So walking into my bedroom, y'all will see that I finally have a nightstand yay and then i have the other portion of my nightstand which is right here so bedroom is mostly clean we're gonna ignore the pile of stuff over there but um bedroom has finally come together i mean it is absolutely the way i wanted it to look there are a couple of things here and there that i can add to the bedroom but for now this is satisfied <laughs> living room is mostly satisfied I got most of my stuff I wanted for the living room. It's just that I want to make this baker's wrap rack happen tonight. And then maybe in the following week, I can finally assemble my little crafting table for my sewing needs. Is this the right way? Oops. Okay, so I just unloaded all the parts that's going to be used to make this baker's rack. Doesn't seem like it's going to be too complicated, but honestly, it's something I want to point out to y'all. I don't know why for all of the like pre-made home furniture uh, decorations that these days, they always include this ugly rustic brown color as the default. It doesn't even look rustic brown. It looks ugly. Um, so... One of these days, maybe in my next paycheck or something, I'm probably going to get some wallpaper and like uh, cover cover this, um, <laughs> cover the rustic brown or maybe sand it down and color it, spray paint it because like I just hate this color and I don't understand why it's become the default color that comes with all furniture that's made for people who don't want to spend like $500 to $1,000 on them.
All right, y'all. So this is so far the finished product. I know in the video earlier, you saw that me, I put the microwave on top. Turns out the air fryer is a little bit too tall for the second rack and the cord is too short to be placed here. So I decided to switch the air fryer with the microwave. I have all of John Luke's like F-O-O-D and S-N-A-C-K stuff down here. So this is actually a really nice spot to put it and it's cleared up this entire area of my kitchen uh, counters and then it cleaned up that area of my kitchen counters the kitchen's a bit of a mess but we're going to work on that later but all of this was so so easily done it took uh an hour because i started vlogging at 6 42 and now it's 7 50 so this is actually a pretty pretty um, nice and easy build and just look at that it looks actually super nice in my space and it fits seamlessly into this living area. So that's the win for today. Uh, hopefully next week I can finish building my crafting table. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna do today and I'm gonna rest for the rest of the night uh, before the start of the next work week. Wow, that took a lot of personal labor. So I'm starting to feel a little snackish. So I'm gonna have one of my protein shakes. This is a new one that I haven't taste tested it out with y'all yet. I know I've done muscle milk, I've done some other ones, but this is the Optimum Nutrition pre-made protein shakes. Optimum Nutrition is probably the most well-known like dry mix in whey protein brand. That's the one that I was using when I was a medical student and always on a budget. But these, these pre-made ones actually come in super, super handy because I don't have to clean any like uh, food processor or blender after making my shakes and I, I can I can take this with me to work which is perfect uh, they are a bit pricey and something that I noticed about these ones is that these are probably the lowest as far as calorie content I've seen on the market so far usually premier protein and muscle milk they're usually around 180 240 calories this one's 140 calories and has 24 grams of protein it has almost the same things um, as the uh, like the mix and stuff has um, but I've tasted this already y'all something that I will say about these is that this is probably the least good tasting out of all the other ready-made protein shakes i've had muscle milk is really good i really like pr premier protein i really my favorite ones so far has been ensure max protein they taste freaking phenomenal but they are also super super expensive so this one is kind of um a bit of a letdown but i can understand why they i guess they tried to keep the calories low by making it more watery and not taste as good <laughs> But usually, um, I can down it, um, but I'm not having as great of a time when I'm downing it. Yeah, it just tastes like cheap chocolate flavored water. Um... It's not like completely unappetizing, but the other ones definitely taste better. But I'm not complaining. This probably keeps me full for about two more hours until it's lunchtime or it's time for me, until I have time to sit down and actually eat a proper meal. My little Jean-Luc baby, he wants some affection right now. So he's getting it. Isn't that right, BB? Isn't that right? Also, I want to give y'all an update on some of the skin struggles I've been having since starting residency. And I've had to like get back on some stronger meds because of these skin struggles that I've been having. So one thing that I've noticed is that recently is that I'm getting a lot, a lot greasier on my belt. <laughs> strip. I'm getting a lot and a lot more greasy on my face. Like it's absolutely ridiculous. Like by the end of a shift, I get so greasy and self-conscious. And even this retinol cream that I've been using, the Ordinary brand, uh, this, what I, this is what I've been using for the last two years. And it's actually done a tremendously good job of keeping, you know, uh, acne down and wrinkles down. But not only am 
is my face getting a lot oilier but you'll notice if you really if we look really close in my face is that i've had breakouts and it's caused some scarring some pretty significant scarring which is making me feel really about myself so i decided to get back on the medication that i took when i first started taking testosterone and i noticed that i was getting a lot more acne and that is something you can buy over the counter you don't need a prescription but it is deferrin gel uh so deferrin gel used to be a prescription uh strength they, they still have a prescription strength which is the 0.3 percent but the 0.1 percent is now available over the counter if you've never heard of it uh, because you're new to skincare you don't follow a lot of skin skincare news and stuff it is a uh, strong um red, vitamin a derivative uh retinoid and it did a really good job the first year that I was on tea and my skin was getting really, really nasty. So I'm back on it and I've been putting it on for the past week. And it's 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 done some significant uh, work on my face and I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I mean, I'm having a lot less breakouts now and my face is clearing up. Also, uh, I know when I first started vlogging, I told you all about this sunscreen that I use, this facial sunscreen called um, La Roche Posay, uh, the 50 the 50 SPS face cream. The only thing about it is that I had to get the mineral-based one because the chemical-based sunscreens, for some reason, make my eyes sting like 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 no one's business and it makes driving kind of dangerous when it starts uh stinging my eyes because it's like really really bad stinging but this one always produces a white cast and yes it does go away after a while but if i'm on a pinch and i need to get to work asap i don't want my co-workers or my patients seeing me looking like a ghost so i just ordered this japanese um sunscreen spf 50 uh, same same strength um, that I've seen over and over again people uh, like swear that it doesn't cause stinging it's by Nivea but it's not available in the US and I'll talk about that a little bit later after I try it on but um, it's the Nivea water gel uh, SPF 50 Japanese sunscreen I'm so excited it's gonna come in tomorrow and we're gonna put it on before I go to work and I'll give y'all a little bit of like a work performance review on it. Hey y'all, so it is Monday night. I just got back from the gym after a day of work. I ended up taking like a two hour nap by accident, but um, it's around like 12.30 a.m. And guess what came in the mail? It is the, uh, the sunscreen that I've been wanting. And um, let me show y'all a little bit of what it looks like. Okay, so this is the Nivea Super Water Gel 50 SPF 50 PA++++, which is like the Japanese system of like determining how like UV protectant something is uh, as far as UVA rays. Um, and the whole thing is in Japanese, so I can't, I don't really understand anything. <laughs> but I have watched lots of YouTube videos and instructional videos and Amazon reviews on this product. If you're wondering why the heck he does Nivea not sell it in the US, I actually did a deep dive because I get super curious about things like this. Turns out that um, a different company owns the rights to Nivea in Japan. It's called Cow compared to whatever company that um, um, that holds like the parent, like Western world Nivea distribution rights. So this is a completely different product that you can only find in Japan because it's made by the D Japan distributor. Also Japan has different guidelines for how to make sunscreen and different regulatory things. So a lot of that thing, but I, I trust Japanese products because they are tried and test tested. The one thing about Korean products, uh, I do love Korean skincare products, but when it comes to sunscreen, screen and things that actually need like medical medical backing is that Korean products tend to not have as big of strict regulations as Japanese products do um, so I just want to play it safe they are getting better but um, this is like literally one of the top rated uh, sunscreens in Japan so we're gonna open it up and see what it looks like but tomorrow I'll, I'll give y'all a performance review something that I've already noticed with these Japanese products is the packaging is all is like so much better than American packaging 
usually when it comes to things like this you need to have a pair of scissors in america and if if you buy a pair of scissors in one of these packets how are you going to get the scissors out if you don't have a pair of scissors to begin with but look this one is super super cool because there are perforations on the side i don't know if you can see it in the camera but there's perforations here that i can open it up from the side and it stays secure but it isn't a pain to take out so i'm gonna go ahead and open this Oh, and it comes off so seamlessly. This is a lot of sunscreen too. So, um, I didn't spend too much money on it. It was like $15 imported. I can only imagine how cheap it is in Japan. So this is really cool, but I've never seen this in any American like pump size bottles, but it has like a cover, uh, which I think is really cool. So it'll protect it in, um, from like, you know, overspray or whatever, or like hitting something and things spraying everywhere um but let's give it a little mini test tonight and then tomorrow i'll actually put it on before work on my face all right i just slid this slid this thing out of here but let's pump some oh oh it's milky y'all look at this hold on let me show y'all it is so milky does it jiggle? It doesn't jiggle that much, but it is very milky. But um, let's like apply it to the back of my arm, okay? All right, it's applied. Doesn't look too bad. It kind of smells like a medicated lotion. It's very lightweight, not thick at all, actually. Wow. It is super, super lightweight. Hold up. Okay. A little bit of stickiness, but not too bad. I'm trying to see if myself on the mirror and like it completely blended in. I can tell that there's a little bit more shininess. I don't know if y'all can see it in the camera, but there's a little bit more shininess to the area I applied compared to this side of my arm. But that like blended so easily and it smells really good. I feel like this is gonna work out pretty great. Um, but we'll see, time, um, a, a performance review will tell us how well this does. All right, y'all, I'm actually just dressed up to go to work uh, this morning and I'm gonna apply the sunscreen to my face and we'll see how it goes. All right, um, just gonna take a little bit more than what I did last night, about that much for my face, and we're just gonna apply it. Still very milky, feels very smooth. I already moisturized my face with vitamin C serum and hyaluronic acid. I keep a light moisturizer throughout the day and I use like a more intense moisturizer. Got some on my neck. I use a more intense, moisturizer at night just to keep my face less greasy throughout the day did notice that there is just the ever so slight whiteness when i applied this but then that quickly went away my eyes are not burning there is about 40% alcohol in this, I think, not 40%, well, there's some form of, like, for, our alcohol is the fourth ingredient on this list, according to the reviewers, but, wow, that applied actually very, very well. My beard. My beard is actually the problem most uh one of the biggest problem areas when i apply mineral base regardless if it's tinted or not because the beard if it's tinted the beard turns a little brown and cakey and if it's white cast it turns a little white and cakey so it's not optimal for either but it looks like my beard didn't really absorb all of that color it did initially and then it went away but 
as of right now, my face actually looks pretty fine. It did add a little bit of a glow to my face, but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Anyways, I'm going to go get ready, go to work, and I'll come back and I'll give y'all a report. Today's only a half day of work, and then the next day is the full day of work, but we'll see. I'll give two days performance and then let y'all know how it goes. Good morning, y'all. Uh, it's Wednesday morning and uh, around 9 p.m. I'm not at work. Usually I have to go to work at 8, uh, and I got super dressed up. I put on the sunscreen and everything today. And um, I drove all the way to work to get an email that it's uh, the clinic is closed this morning. And the reason why is because yesterday there was a terrible, terrible storm uh, that went through Durham. Uh, a lot of my co-workers, uh, co co-residents, co-residents uh, lost power who lived up in North Durham. And actually my clinic that I'm working in right now is up in North Durham and I live in South Durham. So I drove up there and like there's like no power in uh, in most of the places in North Durham and the entire building that I usually work in um, doesn't have power. Apparently they lost power yesterday while I was um, in virtual like academic uh, courses. So um, I have this morning off and possibly the whole day we'll find out. Um, I put on the sunscreen and you'll see like I do look a lot more moisturized with the sunscreen like little bit of shine but doesn't look greasy and I've been liking it so far yesterday um, I was able to wear the entire day without my eyes burning uh, there were even parts of the day where my eyes teared up a little bit and it teared up because I don't know why some sometimes my eyes just water um, and usually when that happens and I have sunscreen on like the old like not non mineral chemical based sunscreens um, that I used a couple of years ago, it would burn my eyes so bad that I had to keep them shut and I had to wipe them with a the tissue or else I wouldn't be able to, um, you know, go about my day. This actually ended up being very, very dangerous and why I completely got out, uh, off of chemical sunscreens uh, on my face because at one time I was driving, it burnt so bad. My vision, I couldn't like keep my eyes open to see the road and I had to actually pull over and then like wipe my eyes. That's how bad it was. So this one has not irritated my eyes the entire day. And I did a whole day of clinic in the morning. I'll show you all a picture after um, I got home. This is how I looked like. And th there's a little bit of grease on my face, but that's because that, I don't think that's the sunscreen mostly. I actually think it's because uh, my face is naturally oily and I'm work uh, I restarted deferring gel because of that. Uh, hopefully that'll go down in time. But um, other than that, like, like no issues and then i kept i didn't wipe the sunscreen off i didn't wipe my face i kept that on for the rest of the day until 5 p.m uh and the rest of the day was usually just my academic day and it yeah i was my eyes are not irritated this is the first first ever chemical based sunscreen that has not irritated my eyes thank the lord mineral sunscreens i love them so much but the fact that they have a white cast it takes a while for the white cast to go away and the fact that even if i get tinted it's still gonna stain my beard with that matte effect um and it gets a little grainy on my beard it's just overall a non-burning chemical sunscreen is the best for me and this is good this is actually pretty phenomenal i really do hope though that it has as good UVB protection and you uh, as as much as it has good UVA protection. I know uh, the active ingredient does have UVB blocking properties, but it is marketed as mostly a UVA protectant. If y'all don't know the difference between UVA and UVB, um, both of them are harmful. UVA is more of a cosmetic harm. Uh, which it will cause wrinkles to happen. But UVB is the one that I'm most, most worried about because UVB is the ionizing radiation that can lead to things like skin cancer. It has higher statistical probability uh, to be linked to skin cancer than UVA rays. So I'm hoping it does have uh, good UVB coverage. I might do some research right now since I do have the morning off. I might go to the gym and do some other stuff. Uh, get my chores done because I've been piling up those dishes throughout the week. Um, 
and then I'll like update y'all tonight if if it does if the act active ingredients do have UVB good good UVB protection. Hey y'all. So it's been officially two straight weeks since I've been using the Nivea Super Water Gel 50 SPF Japanese Sunscreen, not the official Nivea from the Western part of the country, but it's acquired by Japanese company Kao. And uh, here is my review of trying my first like Japanese uh, sunscreen. And it's, it's freaking amazing. I, I, I love it. Uh, I love it all, uh, a ton. <laughs> so I've been using, like I've said, um, I've been breaking out since starting residency and I started back on deferrin gel. If you'll notice, I don't have as many outbreaks anymore. My face is definitely clearing up, but because deferrin gel makes you more sensitive to the sun, I wanted to make sure I had face skin protection so I don't get like UV damage or anything like that. So I know in a previous uh, little snippet thing that I made, I said that I was gonna look up the uh, ingredients to see if they're good UVB protection. Turns out that e Japanese standards requires UVB protection, but there's not actually a good marker even in the US to determine whether or not a sunscreen does really good UVB protection. So some a lot of these things are gimmicks. Um, some things that I do wanna point out to y'all since I've been using this and looking up the ingredients is that um, none of the sunscreens that I know of sold in Japan that are like cheaper like this, like this was like $12 and I'm sure in Japan it's like $3. Uh, they don't say broad spectrum coverage. So that means that um, UV waves come in different spectrums and these ones don't have as broad of a range as the sunscreens that you buy here that say broad spectrum. They tend to be more expensive. La Roche Pousset is one of those companies that sells sunscreens for like $30, $50, but all of theirs is broad spectrum. It has a lot better coverage. But the thing about those sunscreens, one, they're super incredibly expensive, and two, for daily use, it causes white cast, like I've said, in a lot of people with brown skin. And as a person of color, I already have some protection because I have increased melanin. So I feel like Japanese sunscreens are really great for people of color because of the fact that we don't need we don't need to rely on sunscreen as much because our natural melanin protects us, but it's always a good idea to continue some form of protection. So I'm completely fine using this sunscreen for everyday use. However, if I were to go outside uh, in like the hot direct sun for over an hour, I'll probably stick to my mineral sunscreens or my like broad spectrum sunscreens I spend a little bit more money on for uh, those specific settings. But let me tell you all a little bit about how I feel about it after using it for two straight weeks when I've been working from like 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. So first of all, application of the sunscreen is super, super nice and super easy to do. And it gives me like, it makes me feel like I'm moisturized even though there's alcohol as one of the products. It doesn't burn my eyes like when I'm applying it, even though I think alcohol is like the fourth ingredient on, on this thing's list. And, and it, I don't, I don't, it doesn't smell alcoholy to me. It's super milky, like I've said, like as far as the texture. Also, if you're wondering why my bed sheets aren't on, it's because I'm currently washing them. Uh, <laughs> but um, as far as application to like my face and my neck regions, it doesn't leave any like residue on my like shirt or scrubs, making me look weird. It doesn't have any white cast. There's a little bit when I first apply it, like it's a little bit whitish, and then it completely dissipates within like two minutes of application. I applied it all over my face. I've been using it for two weeks straight. I haven't had any single breakouts. And originally when I was first using it, I noticed like after in the afternoon lunchtime period, my eyes started getting irritated and burning a little. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this, this sunscreen isn't gonna work uh, because it's burning my eyes. Um, but then I realized that it's probably the natural oils of my face that are burning my eyes because I had this kind of burning before I even applied any products to my face. And I was even more reassured because one day when I was applying this, like I think in the like second week, start of the second week, I accidentally like touched my the, the corner of my eye a little bit. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in super pain. But turns out my, my eye was fine. 
I didn't have any issues. And then to kind of like further test out of whether or not my eyes are burning because of the fact of the sunscreen or it's my natural oils that I create on my face, I decided to go two days with just applying it to my under eye area and the, the my face down, not my forehead. And turns out my eyes still burn. So it's not a sunscreen issue. It's a Ben Hassin makes a lot of facial forehead grease issue. So y'all, I think uh, I think we have a winner with uh, Japanese sunscreen. Something to note though, after I finish this bottle, I'm probably going to try two other brands and that's because this Nivea Super Water Gel, you'll notice that um, Asian, Asian manufacturers tend to use a different kind of uh, like, I guess, mark like labeling for how good of like sun protection you get this is spf 50 but spf isn't the only thing that tells you how much like protection you're getting there's also the pa ranking system that a lot of asian sunscreen brands use and the more pluses they have the more i guess the more like spectrums it covers um and it gives you a little bit more UVA protection. So the A stands for UVA protection. So this has a three plus UVA protection. I'm not going into the nitty gritty science behind it. I'm just letting y'all know. There's another company called Skin Aqua. They tend to have um, more hydrophobic properties in their sunscreen, which means this, this one, this is another reason why you wouldn't wear this when you're out in the hot sun doing sports outside and stuff is that this is not waterproof. So it will run off your face if you sweat. So the Skin Aqua has more hydrophobic properties. And the other brand that I wanna try out is called Kosei Suncut. It was highly reviewed by a YouTuber named Beninen who's literally uh, <laughs> reviewed every single sunscreen out there. And they have dark skin, uh, darker skin than me. And they really loved um, the Kosei Sport Suncut uh, sunscreen from Japan. And they also have this very, very similar oily face to me. So I want to really try that after I'm done with this. But honestly, I think I'm going to finish this entire bottle, which will probably take a couple of months before I try out the other ones. I think next on my list, I really want to try is the Kosei Suncut um, sunscreen. Anyways, that's it for this week's vlog. Um, I know I talked a lot about skincare, but that's been one of the primary areas of concern that I've been having ever since I started working like really long shifts. It's like my skin was breaking out like, <sighs> like every single day and it was making me very, very self-conscious and scarring my face. Like I'm still kind of self-conscious because I still have some scars, but at the same time, I haven't really had a breakout uh, since restarting Deferrin Gel. So Deferrin Gel and Japanese sunscreen is definitely going to be on my indefinite skincare, like morning skincare routine. So that's it for this week's vlog. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all learned something from it. I hope y'all share this vlog for anyone's entertainment that may be entertained by my antics uh, <laughs> on YouTube. And I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.